from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. With me tonight, my first guests are Sisters of the Road. In representing Sisters, I have Heather Dorfman. Heather is the Development Co-Manager of Sisters of the Road. And also as my guest is Bobby Fother, who is a teacher and artist at the Open Door Gallery. And we'll talk more about why you, in particular, are here tonight, Bobby. But first, Heather, if we could start out, I'd like to get a little background on Sisters of the Road. If you could tell me a little bit about, the, about your mission in the mm -hmm. community and um, maybe a little history. Sure. Yeah, so Sisters of the Road um, is in Old Town, Portland, and we've been part of Portland for over 30 years. Uh -huh. um, we Most folks know us by uh, the cafe that we run in Old Town, Portland, and that cafe um, mostly serves folks who are experiencing homelessness and poverty. Um, I'd say 99% of our customers um, are experiencing homelessness and poverty. And um, anyone can come to eat there, and we do charge $1.25 for meals. I think it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. <laughs> really good price. Especially because most of our meals now are made with local and fresh foods that we get from various community partners um, and make some really amazing and delicious meals. And I've heard they're really good food. I know. Really good. Yeah. You know, I've gone on your website, and I always look and see what yeah. they have. And today, I think it was grilled cheese sandwiches yep. and black bean and sweet potato That's soup. That's right. And I wrote it down because I thought, I do, I do Meatless Monday with my daughter uh -huh. every week. I thought, Good. That's what yep. I want to make next week. Yep. It sounds wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. People always get a kick out of seeing the meals that we I serve know. on our Facebook page. Because you have some really good stuff. Yeah. And what a great price. Yeah. yeah. And people pay for the price. So dollar twenty-five. We charge folks that because we feel like that's a part of respecting people's dignity, assuming that people can and want to pay and want to right. contribute. And so um, over half of the meals that are bought at, at Sisters are bought using barter work. So folks can come in, work 15 minutes, um, and that's enough to earn a meal and a drink. That's great. That's great. What so, kinds of things do you have people do to, to earn that meal? Well, people literally run the cafe. We wouldn't be able to run the cafe mm, without our barter okay. workers and volunteers. So they come in and they um, serve drinks, serve food, serve at the steam table, wash dishes, clean up. Pick up the it's garbage, literally the floors. Exactly. Yeah. All of it. Um, so that's a regular service industry job. Exactly. Right. And for a lot of folks who come there, they come from the service industry. For whatever reason, they may have been out of it for a while, so it's a way to get back into working. Um, for other folks, it's a way to learn new skills. Well, sure, so, and especially maybe if you're a young person who's out on the street, yep. it may be your first job you've mm -hmm. ever had, and at least you've got something now to put on a resume. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of folks do ask people at Sisters to be a reference for them as they start sure. looking for jobs. So. Um, and then the other piece of Sisters that's just as important as our cafe is our systemic change work. And so that really revolves around making, um, working with folks who are, who are experiencing homelessness and poverty to be at the table when policy is being made because we believe that they know best what's needed to change our systems that create homelessness and poverty. Um, so through the trainings and workshops that Sisters offers, folks then go on to testify at City Hall to go lobby legislators in Salem. Um, and then a bunch of folks just went down to California and supported really? work down there for a homeless bill of rights. And we're actually working in coalition with a bunch of other folks to create an Oregon Homeless Bill of oh, Rights right great. now. So, and that's so great that's, experience too. That's right like there. a social change component exactly. to what goes on as well. Exactly. That piece feels just as important as offering a space for folks right. to come sure. in, feel safe, and get a good meal. Both sure. of those go together. So That's very important. Yeah. So you, uh, the, the people that come in, you have a lot of people that are just regulars there that, right. are, all, that are always there then. That's is true. Is that correct? And, yeah. and the thing I think I like best about Sisters is, is the... Um, Everybody's treated with dignity and respect. Absolutely. Whereas, don't you don't you find that people that are that are homeless on the street tend to be invisible mm -hmm. to so many people? Yes. Like, yeah. You know, Unless they get directly in your face. Unless they do, and then it's not a good experience. Then it's right. a negative yeah. experience. Right. You know, and people are afraid. Right. right. So many people who come into Sisters talk to us about this is the one place that I come to that people say hello, that know my name, that smile when right. they see me, and that I feel welcomed and loved, and it's. 
it's wonderful to hear that. It's also really sad to hear that there's yes. so few places where yes. people experience that. But it's a place where folks come and they really feel ownership of the community and they're a part of the community. And when things get tough, our regular customers will be like, you know, in Sisters, this is a safe space and it's a welcoming space. So this is a space that we keep calm and safe for everyone. So they're a part of keeping this community That's great. what it is. That's great. Yeah. I think I first became aware of Sisters when I, I worked in Old Town and I uh, used to walk to work every day. I lived over uh, off of Burnside up on Southeast 28th and I'd walk to work every day or I'd take the bus but I'd always come across Burnside and there was always people sleeping you know in their mm -hmm. sleeping bags and I, I'd you know step over them and around them but, I, yeah. but I'd always say good morning and hello yeah. and eventually I'd get so I knew people you right. know and sometimes I'd learn their names right. you know and shake their hands whatever and it was and then I then I'd run into them down by sisters. I thought, you know, this this was good for me right. because yep. it, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. sort of woke me up to the fact that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> people like everybody else they just hit some tough times right. and and everybody goes through them. Some are tougher than others. So, yeah. yeah, especially with the way that things have been going oh, lately. So many of us are paycheck away from That's being right. by ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. close. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So uh, one of the new things that sisters is doing is um, an art. Yeah. An art exhibit and art. Yeah. What, tell, tell me about this, Bobby. You've been very instrumental in getting this going. Well, it's an art event, and I'm on the committee um, for the second time with a person who brought me in on another project that had um, arts for social change aspect to it. Brenda Morgan, who's the development director for uh, Sisters now, and it the basis is to bring people to artwork and bring all types of people to artwork so that you get a view of the world from different perspectives. So not just the people that can afford expensive artwork, but mm -hmm. <laughs> No, everybody. because artwork should be ex accessible for everyone. It should. Yes. Yeah. So what's the plan? What, you have an event on May 18th. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about where this is and, and what's going on. Sure. Well, it's an uh, all-day show from 10, 10 till 5. Till five. Yep. And it's at the Armory or the Girding Theater yeah. okay, or right, Portland right. Center Stage, <laughs> yeah, right. whichever one you've been okay, to, okay, it's got a lot of okay, names to yeah. it. And we'll be in the lobby and on the mezzanine, and it's a beautiful building it with is. a beautiful space to show things. And beautiful. we're going to have lots of artwork, um, craft work. Uh, accessible things mm -hmm. that people can Good. purchase. Good. Um, we have some expensive things too, but sure. we'll have a and lot have of everything. things where you can come and just support the event. Mm -hmm. Let me back up just a little bit because there has been artwork created by uh, people that are patrons of Sisters. Right. Or who, so tell me a little bit about that. You, yeah. you, I understand you have a, a storeroom of artwork mm -hmm. from like for years. Yeah. T tell me about that. Yeah, well, I mean, actually, you could come into our cafe and see artwork through the ages mm -hmm. that customers have created and have gifted to sisters. Um, our, it's all over the walls in the cafe, and each piece is really important to us. And that said, there's been so much artwork created that some of it, we haven't, you know, we kind of rotate mm -hmm. what's up in the cafe, so we have a storage space where we've held on to artwork uh, because it all means so much to us. And literally through the three decades that Sisters has been around, we have artwork reaching back that far. Is it created there? Or is it created off-site? Where, where does the artwork come from? Do you both. have a space for creating it there? Well, both. Um, much of it, you know, you can come in and you'll see somebody sitting at the counter and drawing pictures, drawing portraits of people. So that happens sometimes. Sometimes folks bring in art that they want to give to us that they've created somewhere else. Um, and then projects. Also, sometimes you've had projects done. So do you, do you have art supplies and that kind of thing available we for do. people there? Yeah, okay. we've been doing workshops leading up to mm -hmm. the oh, event okay. Okay. Um, where local artists have come in and led people. Uh, there was a sort of a collage box making workshop. Uh, okay. There was also a workshop where folks together collaborated to make a song, make two songs together. Oh. So we've been doing that as part you of know, the. I imagine if you're homeless. That is one, uh, one component, one of the many components that is probably missing from your life because you, if you don't have a regular space to create art or music or that kind of thing, that would be that would be really hard. It's well, a, it's, and it's so important to people. I mean, art is so important. It is to, central, to and it's amazing life. to see what our customers, folks, are really creative. So mm -hmm. they manage to often figure out ways to you know, use a pen and a napkin and, and create art. But to mm -hmm. get to have access to other sorts of art supplies and to sure. people with other knowledge and skills that they can share Beautiful. with each other is really important. You provided a few pieces of artwork yeah. here that you said are from the storage From unit. the storage space, Okay, I'm yep. gonna hold these up. Yep. And uh, Tony, maybe you can get a, a shot of this here. Yep. Oops, did I get, 
two. I got two here. All right. Tell me about the, this piece, what you know about this. Um, you know, I this honestly very don't detailed. know a ton about each individual piece, okay. um, but I know that this, these all come from our community and it, they come from heart. Uh, a lot of feeling is put into each of these pieces, as you can see. That, this has great detail in it. Yeah, this is it's very really beautiful. The it's colors are watercolor. amazing. It's watercolor? Yeah. yeah, it's watercolor. I was going to say, Bobby can probably speak to these <laughs> better <laughs> than anyone. So this well, is no, one. I, the I don't know the, the all the details about mm -hmm. the actual theme, et cetera, et cetera, but it is a watercolor piece that's oh. on watercolor paper. So I love the detail. The person of that did a very yeah. good job oh, of that blending. Mm -hmm. Jacob Weed. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing to me the vibrancy oh, of the it's colors. Lovely. Okay, now this one. This looks like oil pastel. Mm. Um, once again, it's on watercolor paper. I wish they were all signed and dated. Yeah, yeah. The dates would be very interesting to find out how, it would long, be nice to know how that. long these are. Yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. when people create, you know, a lot of times I found some of my work that I finished for a specific thing, um, and I frame it and I get it all put together, and it's like, and no one necessarily likes it and then the piece that I <laughs> never finished that's the one that that's people the one want that's so a lot of people who come to those types of situations they're they're kind of doodling mm. oh right mm -hmm. in um, a sense this it's just one that they have skills is by Corrine from yeah. 1996 yeah so this one is older yeah and is this uh it also, is it also charcoal is it pen well I would say it's charcoal it kind of looks like oil pastel also so and I really love the the laughing child. I know, it's you know, great. And, kind of exuberance and you want, coming. From and you wonder when you look at it, is there a story here? Yeah, you know, and I it was know. with any artwork. Yeah, don't there's, feel usually, that way. Yeah. Yeah. there's usually a story behind yeah. it. And sometimes, you know, a piece like this, when you pick it up and look at it, it could have just been crayons that were on the table for wow. the day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Okay, so at this at this event, mm -hmm. at this. Um, what do you call this? An art art festival. Art festival. Festival. Yeah. Yeah. An art art festival. festival. Yeah. Will there be food and entertainment, or is mm -hmm. it just all straight art? What what's what all is going to be going on there? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's at the Armory, as Bobby, <laughs> <man. laughs> as Bobby mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so their cafe will be open um, mm -hmm. for folks to you know there'll be food there, but we'll also have music. Maybe Bobby can speak a little bit more to that. Mm -hmm. um, there'll also be interactive workshops going on. Okay. There'll be discussion groups. Um, there's just going to be there's going to be artwork for that that will be displaying from our community and then artwork for sale as well and you know me meeting with all kinds of amazing artists from right. the region. So. Okay. Right, because it is a fundraiser. Yeah, okay. yes. right. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Don't um, forget that part. Right. Very well, good. I know from the Open Door Gallery, uh, we we're going to have several things happen there. I have um, we're going to be doing some face painting. Two of my students will be par participating in that. And what the Open Door Gallery is, it's, uh, I teach in an alternative high school, okay. McCoy Academy. Mm -hmm. So I opened a gallery in order to teach the students how to install, create the art, um, present an art show, et cetera, et cetera, so they could get those skills as oh, well. Cool. And out of that, we've been doing our own little grand openings, et cetera. Well, along with that came some students who actually had like vocal talent. We have one vocalist who's going to be at the event to sing. Great. And Isn't two it wonderful to students. discover those things? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Two. Well, she was brave enough to say yes, ah, number good one. For her. So that, good that's for her. really important. Yeah. And then two of my other students are going to do face painting, and they're fabulous artists. I have one of them. Uh, yeah, you the have some work. Um, work from a couple of your students here. Yes, this uh, is, is this, Elijah this Garcia. Right yes. Okay. Elijah Garcia's work, he's going to be one of our face painters. He's Great been the colors. most consistent yeah. student for completing his assignments. Uh -huh. <laughs> and also, he's been one of the artists at the gallery who has sold several pieces uh -huh. from our gallery. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So what happens when really the good. piece is sold? Does the money the go artist, to? The money goes to the artist, 20% mm -hmm. goes to the gallery. That's right. our standard right. for all of our artists at the gallery. Okay. And we have several artists. We have a couple of international artists who work with us, as well as some artists who, um, like Charlotte Lewis, who is deceased now, but we have limited access to some of her, uh, some of her works. print work and some of her original work okay. to help the school. Good. Okay. We have one more by a student. This is a framed one, so it's a yes. little bit bigger here. Savannah Tidwell. I, I gave her her last assignment for this term, which was to complete three works for the art show. So she made all of these different pairs of earrings. And then mm. she finished those, and she said, well, I want to do a few more pieces. And this was one of them. And it was like, oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So this is her work, which will it's also beautiful. be at our show. Wow. Good. 
Good for her. Nice. How fun. Do you enjoy the teaching aspect of your The teaching your is job? very interesting. Um, it's my neighborhood, so I grew up in the neighborhood that I teach in, in North, Northeast Portland. Uh -huh. And so most of the kids there have an interesting view of teachers and what mm. they're supposed to be doing for you. Well, especially if well, they're in an alternative school, they've already gone to the regular right. schools. Right, and, and it didn't necessarily work for right. them. Right, that's why they're there, yeah. And back in the day, I would have been one of those students. So, because I was always busy and, and kind of bored in school and had my artwork to turn mm. to. So it's been interesting for them to understand what I'm teaching the way I'm teaching it. Because I'm using my real world skills along with the academic skills that they have to have in order to pass their classes and get their credits. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. the kids, they know what this fundraiser is for and, and oh, who yes. this is benefiting. And yes, they definitely know what that. it's for, who it's benefiting. Good, good. We have some other artwork that, mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, let's show some pictures first that we have yeah. that you supply. We have lots of good artwork yeah. today. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at some of the pictures. Uh, first, we have some from um, Sisters, where you're at, at the, um, at Sisters itself, yeah. working on the during workshop. during a project? Yeah, yes. so let's yeah. take a look at during some of those workshop. first of all. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, well this is uh, Chris and Jeannie and they're a couple of our staff members and they're working in Sister's Tiny Kitchen making some of that delicious food. They make mm. uh, about 225 meals a day in this tiny kitchen. Wow, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. And this is some of the local fresh uh, produce that has been donated to Sister's. Yeah, a lot of donations. Yeah. That, huh? mm -hmm. yeah, and here's a view of the cafe kind of looking down so you can see it's a busy day. Folks sitting at the counter and getting ready to order a meal. And so now this is at one of the art workshops, and this is the one where they made sort of a collage box. Um, and a local artist, Sharon Geraci, um, led this workshop. And we had a lot of folks participate, and they seemed to really, really enjoy it and Fun. made some powerful pieces. Good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is a couple other folks from Sisters. Um, you'll see a lot of hugs anytime you come into Sisters. <laughs> a lot of hugs really going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a space for people to come together, and a lot of folks, it's family. Yeah. So, I can understand yeah. that. So, this is another picture of the art oh, workshop. That's Sharon. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, and this is one of our regular volunteers, Doug. Um, and he is at Sisters and helping out all the time. And he participated in the art workshop and oh, got great. to, you know, express this part of himself. Nice. Good. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh. Now, I want to show a couple of pictures yeah. here, too, that you brought in. And then we have a few more that we want to show mm -hmm. uh, on the air here. But you have all sorts of great artwork. Which should I just start with first? This one? Well, uh, the gallery uh, is being supported by several artists uh -huh. who uh, live in Portland and a few who don't live here. But uh, like one artist has sent me his work from Cameroon. Oh, wow. Which was really touching mm -hmm. to me because we kind of met online through another person. Uh -huh. We talked for like over a year. He does the same kind of social change through art okay. work uh -huh. with children. And so it's been nice to have that feature come to us. God. So okay. this Let's is this uh, Mufu Ahmed. He's an artist from Nigeria. And Mufu kind of surprised all of us with, he originally came to me as a sculptor. So I have all these wonderful sculptures uh -huh. of his metal work, sculptures. Uh -huh. His work is out at uh, in North Portland at the community housing uh, space out there, et cetera. And yeah. so I asked him one day, we were needing speakers. He says, oh, I have speakers. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, I'm a singer too. <laughs> and he has CDs and everything out. Wow. So then another day, he has a beautiful, uh, oh, what's it called? Not tie-dye, but um, anyway, he has batik? beautiful club batik. He has beautiful batiks that he's done. Wow. He's uh, one of the few artists who knows some of the dyeing traditions of indigo dyeing. And then one day we're doing another thing. We said, well, we need some smaller pieces to put out. He says, oh, I have some smaller pieces. So wow. he brought out like so 50 of these little drawings wow. in oh. ink. I love it. Wow. Right. I like ink drawings. We don't have a lot of time. So He's I from Nigeria, get through, by the way. I wanna, yes, mm -hmm. I want to get through some of these because there's some amazing work here. This okay, is Cali Hesh. Way, am I doing this right? Yes, you're okay. doing it right. I know. I can't, well, I can't see is, from back. <laughs> yeah. No, Cali Hesh is from uh, California, but he lives here, and he's a... Um, Basquiat and Picasso are his mm -hmm. idols, so to speak. You can kind of tell in his work. So I mentor him. He's an adult artist. He's a, uh, most of all of these are adult artists. Adult artists. Okay, good. All right. Now tell me about this picture here. This is Alice Price, whose mother brought her to me to kind of help support her. I mentor a lot of students, so I've had like 40 years of mentoring people wow. who are 
Good for you. Uh, visual and performing artist. So this is one of her works she did for a show that we had up at uh, Artist Repertory Theater. Nice. nice. So we can see most of this at the at You'll the see event? this work okay. at the event. Okay. Tell me about this one. This is beautiful. This okay. is uh, the work of the late Charlotte Lewis. Uh, I have limited access to a series of her prints as well as a few of her original works, and we'll have those. And this is a limited the, print. Yes, and mm -hmm. she's pretty well known throughout. Like, she has murals up all around town mm -hmm. uh, in Portland Police Department in North Portland. If you've been in the meeting room, there's her mm -hmm. mural I in have, there. I have, actually, yes. And she's done a lot of work. Um, right, she right. did a lot of community work in town. Mm -hmm. And then this is an original from this Charlotte. This is also oh. a Charlotte. Oops. Lewis piece that I actually used one. for our <laughs> yes. gallery festival last year. Um, Isn't that joyful? The girl in the yellow dress. Yes. And so she's been an icon for us doing this work, an inspiration for us. I don't, I don't want to put it down. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know the event is going to be from what time to what time? From 10 a.m. to 5? To 5 p.m. Right? Yep. So it's an all-day event. It is. People can yeah. kind of come and go. Exactly. Um, we can't say prices on the air, but mm. you, can you just pay at the door or mm -hmm. or get tickets ahead of time? There's a suggested donation at the okay. door. Okay. But donation at the door. And the price range of things will be from $2 to 2000 It so depends it, on... It, there's you, something mm -hmm. for everybody. There's something for everyone in there because we really are striving as to use art as a social change thing, and we want it accessible. That's okay. the most important piece of it. It's accessible to the community. Well, we're getting ready to close out this okay. segment. Let's show some of the rest of those pictures sure. that, that were sent, and maybe you could tell us just a little bit about those as we look at them. Sure. Um, There's some amazing, amazing artwork. Yeah. So let's see if we can pull that up on the screen here. Okay. So this is... Oh, Chris. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm no, sorry. Please. I didn't know who was in all of these pictures, so it's like... Yeah. So his photography will be shown at uh, wow. Journeys, and he is a part of Sisters Community, so it's going to be really exciting. Fabulous photographer. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is yes, a, a quilt fabric artist named Alethea Devi. Am I saying that right? Do you know this yeah, it's Alethea. Okay. Beautiful. Um, oh, oh, this is oh, that's a amazing. bead artist, and I am forgetting her name. Oh. Um, but it's incredible, and I've, all of her other pieces Moons? that we had pictures. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, I think it's a big yeah. shell. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's that's really gorgeous. beautiful. I love that. Um, oh. This one you might be familiar with. Oh no, <laughs> I was commissioned by. Uh, this is the, yours. Yes, oh. the um, Regional Arts and Culture Council had commissioned me to do a work for their portable works collection. So this is. You'll see this in different offices or wherever they ship it to around the oh, city oh, to be in different beautiful. buildings. That's I didn't wonderful. know that was up there. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, okay. <laughs> um, this, is this one of the artists that you sent to that us That looks as like well? Charlotte's I work. think so, yes. The um, bright, bright colors and mm -hmm. the family sort of subject. Mm -hmm. It's very reminiscent of Charlotte's work. I'm not sure if it's exactly a piece of hers because she mentored several other oh, artists okay. around town also. But yeah, actually that does okay. look like work. Oh, that, and then that's again. me again. Aww. I have a series of note cards and stationary Aww. type items. That's what I use to help raise funds to, I've always raised funds with my arts uh -huh. to do projects with children. Mm -hmm. And then this is a uh, photographer wow. from the Geezer Gallery. I mm -hmm. believe his yes. name is George Ingram. Does that tell, okay. It rings a bell. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gorgeous. Oh, this is one of the gorgeous collage boxes created by uh -huh. a Sisters Community member. Nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we're also going to have Spin Your Own Yarn. A person from oh, Sisters is going to, yeah. yeah. A person oh, really? from Sisters is going to wow. teach folks how to spin their own yarn, wow. and you get to go home with your own spindle, so you can keep going. Uh -oh. So, yeah. That's great. It's going to be That's a really great. amazing day. Sounds like day. it's going to be a fun event. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Any last yes. things you want to share about Sisters or the event before I let you go tonight? Um, just that we hope folks can come out and join us, and uh, you can find more information about um, the event and Sisters online at sistersoftheroad.org. Thank you both of you, Heather and Bobby, for being here today. Thank I've you. enjoyed hearing about it. i got to get down to Sisters for yeah. a meal sometime. Buck yeah. 25, oh, I think sure. I can afford that. Yes. Yeah, that, <laughs> that sounds good. And you do have um, 
tickets, like coupons available? Meal that coupons, you can, yep, you that folks can buy for $2 each. And then if folks have asked you for a, um, some change and you'd like to engage with them, you can give them the $2 yeah. meal coupon. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think that's great. I've told a lot of people about that yeah. idea because it's, you know, yeah. so I don't know whether, you know, mm -hmm. it's a good way to hungry. start a relationship. Yeah, they're going to take it. They're and you know, it. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. so much for watching this segment of Community Hotline. And don't go away. We'll be right back with the Gresham Sister City Association. Thanks.